My name is Joseph. I have two questions to ask. Why all the Muslims men are allowed to marry for four women? And the second one is, how can you prove that Jesus was not crucified? Brother, there's two questions. Brother, are you a Christian? I am. Brother, there's two questions. That why does Islam permit a man to have up to four wives? Why does Islam permit a man to have more than one wife? And second question, how can you prove that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was not crucified? That Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth which says marry only one. You read the Bible, you read the Ramayana, you read the Mahabharata, you read the Veda. No religious book on the face of the earth says marry only one besides the Quran. If you read Ramayan, the Hindu scriptures, the father of Sri Ram, he had more than one wife. If you read Mahabharata, Sri Krishna, how many wives he had? Four? Ten? Thousand? Ten thousand? He had 16,108 wives. So if Sri Krishna can have 16,108 wives, so why can't Muslims have maximum up to four? If you read the Old Testament, it says that Solomon, peace be upon him, had 700 wives. Abraham, peace be upon him, had three wives. So Old Testament tells you can marry as many wives as you want. Same as the New Testament says that you should follow Old Testament. So in Hinduism, in Christianity, in Judaism, you can marry as many as you want. It is later on that the church put a restriction that Christians should marry only one. It is later on Rabbi Ben Shemgen Yehuda passed a sign on and say that Jews should marry only one. Otherwise, previously, they used to marry as many as they wished. It is the Indian penal code in India in 1954 that put a restriction and said under the Hindu Special Marriage Act, the Hindus should marry only one. But the scriptures put no restrictions. Let's analyze what does the Quran say. Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 3, marry women of a choice in twos, threes, or fours, but if you can't do justice, marry only one. This statement, if you can't do justice, marry only one, is only given in the Quran and no other religious scriptures. Let us analyze why does Quran give permission for the Muslim men to marry more than one woman, maximum four. The reason is that by nature, male and female are born in equal proportion. But if you ask any pediatrician, he will tell you, the doctor of the children, that the female child is stronger than the male child in fighting germs and diseases. So you have more deaths among the male children as compared to female children. So in pediatric age itself, the females are more than the males. As life goes on, there is death due to wars, due to alcoholism, due to drug addiction, due to accident. In all these cases, more men are dying as compared to females. So today in the world, there are more females as compared to males. In few countries, like India and China, the female population is less than the male population because of female feticide and female infanticide. In India, according to a BBC report, every day more than a thousand fetuses are being aborted after they are identified as females. If you multiply this figure by 365, you get a total of more than a million fetuses are being aborted every year in India after they are identified that they are females. According to the Tamil Nadu government hospital report, out of 10 females born alive, four are put to death. If you stop this evil practice of female feticide and female infanticide in India, even in India, the female population will become more than the male population. Even in China, if you stop this evil practice, the female population will become more than the male population. Today, if you analyze, in USA alone, there are 4.7 million females more than males. In UK alone, there are 1.2 million females more than males. In Germany alone, there are 1.6 million females more than males. In Russia alone, there are 10.6 million females more than males. And God alone knows that how many females are more than males throughout the world. If I agree with you that one man should only marry one woman, and suppose your sister happens to live in America, or suppose my sister happens to live in USA, and the market is saturated, every man has found a wife for himself, yet there will be 4.7 million females who will not find life partner. And if your sister happens to be one of them, or if my sister happens to be one of the 4.7 million females who have not found a life partner for themselves, the only option for them is that she either marries a man who already has a wife 
or becomes public property. Public property, such a harsh word. It is the most sophisticated word I can use. I cannot use a better word. You know, in America, today the statistics tell us, on average, a man has eight different sexual partners before he settles down with one. Having mistresses in USA is very common. Five, 10, 20, 30, no problem. Having more than one legal wife, it doesn't go down their throat. When a woman is a mistress, she doesn't get her rights. She's dishonored. She's not treated well. In Islam, when a woman becomes a second wife, she gets her honor, she gets her right, she's treated well. Any modest woman, if you ask her, that would you prefer being a second wife of a man who's already married or become public property, they would opt for the first. So Islam has given permission for some men to have more than one wife to protect the modesty of the woman. Coming to your second question. Is it allowed for ladies to marry four men? Brother, you're asking counter question. The time is limited. You asked two questions, now you're asking a third question. Are you convinced with the first answer? I'm convinced with the first one. MashaAllah. So you're convinced. Okay. The brother asked that, is a woman allowed to have more than one husband? If you do that, this problem will be exaggerated I mean, more. I mean in Muslims, in, in Muslims. As it is, women are more than men. If women marry more than one husband, the problem will be exaggerated. Point number one. Point number two, if a man has more than one wife and if the child is born, you can easily identify who is the father, who is the mother. If a woman has more than one husband and if the child is born... The DNA is still alone. Brother, let me finish the answer, na? You asked the question, was I interfering? Was I interrupting? Yes or no? No. No. So why are you interrupting? After I finish, you can ask, na? I'm a medical doctor. Are you a medical doctor? No. I'm a medical doctor. I know about DNA testing. I'll come to it. Once, if a woman has more than one husband, two husbands, and if a child is born, and if he goes to admit in the school, and if the question, who's your father, she'll have to give two names. <laughs> You're talking about DNA testing. I know about it. DNA testing is recent. Was DNA testing there 50 years back? Was it there? No. It's a new recent discovery, yet it's not 100%. Even if I agree it's 100%, it is now, it wasn't there before. Islam is there since time immemorial. And this is not the only reason. Even if I agree tomorrow it becomes 100% perfect, this is not the only reason. Today science tells us that man is more polygamous in nature as compared to the female. Today science tells us that during menstrual cycle, the female undergoes certain psychological changes. It's not possible for her to do the role of multiple wives. But a man doesn't undergo these changes, it's possible for him to do a role of multiple husbands. Today science tells us that if a man has multiple sexual partners and all are faithful, there is no problem. But if a female has multiple sexual partners and all are faithful, there are chances of sexually transmitted diseases to emerge. And that disease will go back to the male partner. So medically, it is not acceptable that a female has multiple partners, but medically and scientifically, it's acceptable that a male can have multiple partners.